Basics of PERT, CPM or Network Analysis Network analysis is the general name given to certain specific techniques which can be used for the planning, management and control of projects. PERT was developed by the US Navy for the planning and control of the Polaris missile program and the emphasis was on completing the program in the shortest possible time. In addition, PERT had the ability to cope with uncertain activity completion times. Example, for a particular activity the most likely completion time is 4 weeks but it could be anywhere, between 3 weeks and 8 weeks. CPM was developed by DuPont and the emphasis was on the trade-off between the cost of the project and its overall completion time. Example for certain activities it may be possible to decrease their completion times. By spending more money how does this affect the overall completion time of the project? Let us understand the activity node relationship. In network diagram, arrows represent activities and circles the events. The length of an arrow is of no significance. Each activity should be represented only by one arrow and must start and end in a circle called even. The tail of an activity represents the start and head the completion of work. Rules for activity on arrow, AOA, network construction. Activity A Activity B must follow Activity A Activity B and C must follow Activity A Activity C must follow Activity A and B Activity C must follow Activity A and Activity D must follow Activity A and Activity B. In network diagram, arrows represent activities and circles the events. Here, the length of an arrow is of no significance. Each activity should be represented only by one arrow and must start and end in a circle called event. The tail of an activity represents the start and head the completion of work. The event numbered 1 denotes the start of the project and is called initial event. All activities emerging, or starting, from event 1 should not be preceded by any other activity, or activities. An event carrying the highest number denotes the completion event. A network should have only one initial event and only one terminal event. The general rule for numbering the event is that the head event should always be numbered larger than the number at its tail. That is, events should be numbered such that for each activity, I, J, I is less than J. An activity must be uniquely identified by its starting and completion event, which implies that A. An event number should not get repeated or duplicated. B. Two activities should not be identified by the same completion event. C. Activities must be represented either by their symbols or by the corresponding ordered pair of starting completion events. The logical sequence, or interrelationship, between activities must follow following rules. A. An event cannot occur until all its incoming activities have been completed. B. An activity cannot start unless all the preceding activities, on which it depends, have been completed. Dummy or redundant activity. The following are the two cases in which the use of dummy activity may help in drawing the network correctly, as per the various rules. First. When two or more parallel activities in a project have the same head and tail events. Second, when two chains of activities have a common event, yet are completely or partly independent of each other, as shown in figure A. A dummy which is used in such a case, to establish proper logical relationships, is also known as logic dummy activity. In figure A, activities B and C have a common predecessor activity A. At the same time, they have activity D as a common successor. To arrive correct network, a dummy activity for the ending event B to show that D may not start before B and C is completed. This is shown in figure B. In figure A, if head event of C and D do not depend on the completion of activities A and B, then the network can be redrawn, as shown in figure B. Otherwise, the pattern of figure A must be followed. Let us understand this with the help of an example. An assembly is to be made from two parts X and Y. Both parts must be turned on a lathe. Y must be polished, whereas, X need not be polished. The sequence of activities, together with their predecessors, is given below. Here, we need to redraw the table showing the activities and their predecessor, 
so that we find out what all activities are starting from each predecessor. Here, we must ensure that all the activities shown in activity column also feature in the predecessor column, and the last activity should be blank. So, let us start solving the problem. First of all, we need to check that all the activities are showing in activity column as well as in predecessor column. Here the repetition of activity B and activity C together on either side. That is in activity column and in predecessor column indicates the occurrence of dummy activity. Since activity A is not having any predecessor, we can directly draw with activity A emerging from start event. Similarly, activity B and activity D shall emerge from activity A. Now since activity D emerges from activity B independently while activity E emerges from combination of activity B and activity C. Hence the dummy activity is introduced which originates from activity B and merges with activity C from where activity E shall start. Also, activity D originates from activity B. Further, activity G starts with a combination of activity D and activity E. And afterwards, activity H originates from activity G. Since, from predecessor H, no further activity originates, the PERT is complete.